It's Monday and it is New Center now. And how beautiful. Well, we are outside, uh, not by accident, because come on, this is what we've been waiting for, right? I know we have to do the news, but can we just stay here? No. All right. No, we, we can't. We have to do the news. Hey, by the way, coming up tonight, we're talking about a big boom that happened in Kennebec County, and a lot of people are scratching their heads saying, what happened? The Boston Marathon is one week from today. There's a lady from Maine who's going to be running in it, and she in particular has quite a story. She almost died last year. She's running this year. It's a great story. Jeez, I'm a little worried about our photographer walking backwards right now, but we're also talking about self-help housing, building your own house to lower your payment. We made it from there. We made it to here. Of this is New Center Now. Welcome to New Center Now on this Monday indoors. I'm Lee we made Goldberg. It. I know. That and was a I'm long Amanda walk. Hill. That was a life. I think I almost pulled the muscle. was very concerned for the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, maybe you heard this. A loud noise and shake of the ground. A lot of people scratching their heads about this today. Yeah, I mean, hundreds of comments on Facebook. People wondering, okay, what the heck happened in Kennebec County? And, of course, offering some theories as well. Oh, yes. New Center's Jess G Gagne set out to get some answers. Oh, bang. What the heck was that? Had homeowners and homes trembling. My house shook, the windows shook. From Farmingdale to Hallowell to West Gardner, hundreds have posted online asking what caused the disturbance on Sunday night around 9. It was very creepy feeling, very eerie. The loud bang, shaking, and just dead calm after. State police say several calls came in, but they have yet to determine what caused the noise. Officers called the FAA to see if any planes had crashed, checked for earthquake activity, and monitored fire station frequencies, but didn't find anything. Coincidentally, they say some other loud events did take place that same evening. Two 1,000-pound propane tanks exploded in Pittsfield, but that's 45 miles away from the towns and cities where the complaints were coming from so police have ruled that out. There was also an issue at a CMP substation in Augusta, leaving thousands without power. CMP's Gail Rice says it's possible there was a loud noise when one of their devices failed, but it's highly unlikely that it was loud enough to be heard several miles away. Theories as to what could have happened have been popping up online, some more amusing than others. To have something that large happen and... and have it be in question of like doubt what was really going on is a little disconcerting. <laughs> Let's verify another theory we got from a viewer. He says the loud noise that could have come from a cryoseism, also known as an ice quake. Now that's a seismic event caused by the sudden cracking of frozen soil or rock that's saturated with water or ice. So we went right to the expert, the state's geologist, Bob Marvini. He says this claim is all wrong. Marvini says ice quakes do happen, but the conditions last night were not right for one. A ice quake or cryo seism typically happens when we go into a, a deep cold snap. It doesn't happen when we go into thaw, so that's definitely not the reason for any any activity uh, anywhere in Maine right now. So the idea that the loud boom last night was related to an ice quake is false and that should be coming up shortly there you go <laughs> we did it <laughs> we and amanda send it back to you <laughs> oh my goodness all right forget about that ice ice baby uh we are all about that spring oh, KC. What are you Behi the, the man news? behind the curtain, curtain now. <laughs> Re reveal show yourself everybody. Yeah, show everybody reveal oh there he goes <laughs> A lot of us, a lot of us have wished for that over the years. Oh, his mic's oh, not on. No. This is definitely Monday, people. Hey, we'll get there someday. How about now? Hey! hey. All right. So we have a little, uh, little curtain there. Anyways, it's a nice out. Good thing because I just waited 30 seconds of the forecast. It's uh, 80 in Sanford. Hill, look at that. You were saying it's really 79. How about 80 in Sanford? 76 in Freiburg, Rockland, Bar Harbor. 
it's spring, you know how it goes, in the 50s there. Most of New England is into the 70s and some 80s out there. Tomorrow will actually be a little bit warmer, but I don't think it'll be as nice a day. We were sunny through most of today, just a few high, thin clouds now. But by tomorrow, this warm front is going to sag over northern Maine and down east Maine and give us a few showers there. So temperatures will skyrocket over the southern part of the state. Watch these 70s and uh, low 80s again. But notice northern Maine will not get in on the action tomorrow from Greenville to Millinocket to Caribou. Temperatures there only in the upper 40s and low 50s. Guys, we'll be back with a look at your extended range forecast, which does not feature any snow. Happy to hear that. Uh, a lot of people fired up uh, about this one. 200 Maine lawyers responding after an asylum seeker was arrested in the Cumberland County District Courthouse on Thursday. Remember, we showed you this. The case is Abdi Farah Ali. He was arrested by Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents after an arraignment. His lawyer saw it happen and immediately went to a judge to put the incident on record. Yeah, ICE agents say they generally make arrests at a courthouse as a last resort. Today, 179 lawyers from Maine signed a letter to Attorney General Jeff Sessions requesting that practice be ended. They want courthouses added to the list of sensitive locations, which also include religious ceremonies and houses of worship. Meanwhile, parents could soon be getting help from the state to fund their kids' private school. A bill discussed in Augusta today would give parents state money to be used for education outside of the public school system. Through the bill, 90% of a state subsidy would be put into a savings account for students and could be used for things like tuition, textbooks, transportation to private schools, or distance learning programs and tutors. This idea had a lot of you guys talking about it on Facebook today. Jesse Morris had this to say, I think the law is a great idea depending what strings might be attached. We took our middle child out of public school to homeschool him. I'm home, so this was doable, but some families don't have that option. This law could potentially help a lot of people. But Marianne Goodwin disagrees, writing, quote, do not like this idea. If you don't want your child to attend public school, then you should pay for it. This takes money away from the school system. Our schools are already costly. Very good point. With more news now, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a massive fire. And you can see the pile of rubble in Portsmouth after the fire at the State Street Saloon. It took more than 100 firefighters to put it out. Investigators do think that the fire started perhaps in the kitchen, maybe in the alley just behind the building, too. Uh, the apartment building next door, that's destroyed, and now at least 17 people are without a home. No one, thankfully, is hurt. And you could pay more for gas if a lawmaker gets his way. Representative Andrew McLean is sponsoring a bill that would make the tax on gas higher in Maine. They would the money would then fund road repairs. A hearing is set for tomorrow in Augusta on that one, and it is just one of several bills aimed at getting money for roads. Dakota gets his day in court tomorrow. Of course, that is the dog that Governor LePage pardoned from a death sentence. Dakota killed a neighbor's pug last year. Meanwhile, Maine's Conservation Department is now getting involved in this particular case. They say that this case could have implications for the state's animal welfare laws, so they do have an interest in that. Lee and Amanda, back to you. All right, thanks, Adrian. Hey, a program could help more people become homeowners, but it does come with some elbow grease. We're going to tell you all about it next and a little bit later. I can't think about the race, I can't talk about the race without like just tearing up or like getting emotional and and knowing what a, a true like blessing it is. A runner who was injured so badly she wasn't sure she'd ever be able to walk again and will now take on the Boston Marathon in one week. Her story coming up on now. Our mortgage is dirt cheap. Right. It's because quite a bit less than renting an apartment. Owning your own home is part of that American dream, but it's just not a reality for a lot of families. For some, it's a lack of credit. Others just can't seem to save up enough for that hefty down payment. But Maine actually offers a program to help, and despite being around since the 90s, there are still a lot of people who've never heard of it. It's called Self-Help 
housing, no down payments, and a very low monthly mortgage. The only catch is that you have to work for it, building your own home on nights and weekends while helping other families build their homes. It's not a handout, but it is a hand up for those who've been turned away by lenders. We caught up with one of those families after nearly five years in their very own home. Separate the two. In the beginning, out. Eric and Hope Hoyt had no personal space. Well, we were living with my mom. No guarantee for a future in their very own home. The couldn't cost. find the right house and we couldn't afford the right house. Self-help housing through community concepts changed that. We started building, I think, in June. Each year, six families are chosen to work together. They go through home buyer education, get financing that's often at a much lower rate, and save a lot of money by actually building together. They will teach you as you go. Every process is a learning experience, especially for somebody that has no clue. Four years after moving in, the Hoyts have used that experience. The chair reel moldings all handmade. To make their home their own. There's supposed to be two bedrooms over here that we opened up and turned into one room. Every lived in inch. From the appliances to the backsplash, the paint. Showing signs of family. A lot of people don't have much confidence in themselves. They don't feel that they can do something like build their own house. But that confidence comes with each nail, each support beam. It's really good for me to sit back and see people develop through the process because they do. They gain confidence in other parts of their life along with the house. Because this home isn't just a gift or a handout, it's something these families have worked hard for. It's awesome when it's done. You get to stand back and say, I did that. All right, to answer some of the big questions, six families in the same area work on each other's homes at nights and on weekends for about a year. You do not need money saved up, just good credit or even no credit as long as you have good references. And you do not have to be a first time home buyer. To find out whether this is a program for you, just reach out to Community Concepts. We will have a link on our website a little bit later tonight. I wish I was qualified to do anything more than change a light bulb because that's they will really teach you. cool. They will teach you it all. All right, well, yeah. maybe there is a hope for me. <laughs> Never thought there would be. There is hope for more sun. Mr. Carson will have those details for us coming up. We'll check your credit card statements. If you shopped at a gaming store over the holidays, GameStop says hackers may have gotten a hold of your info if you used a credit card there between last September and this February. There are 12 of these stores in Maine, by the way. Auburn police posted this on their Facebook page, warning customers about it. It says that the hacked data is offered for sale online. Now, I did speak with Deputy Chief Jason Moen today. He says they're really just trying to get the word out to customers so they can be aware of this, look for suspicious activity. And if you do see anything suspicious on your card, if you shopped at one of these game stops, do let your credit card company know immediately. That's tough. You've got to keep track of yes, those statements do. all the time, for Especially sure. More than ever, well. right? Oh, yeah. yes. Hard to keep track of. All right, Ugh. thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Katie Ortiz with your social stop. There is a mammoth outcry online against United Airlines. No, it's not over leggings this time. Uh, several passengers posted videos to social media of what went down after a United after United Airlines overbooked a flight out of Chicago. Now, fair warning, this video can be a bit disturbing for some. Now, nobody was willing to give up their seat on the overbooked flight, so United picked four passengers at random and it got ugly. Law enforcement dragging a passenger out of his seat when he refused to give it up. Now, witnesses say the man is a doctor and he said he had a patient to see the next morning. The CEO of the airline released a statement calling it upsetting. And he says their team is working with authorities and is con conducting their own review of what happened. They're also working to reach out to the passenger directly. Okay, so we're pivoting to a much lighter video now. The New Gloucester Fire Rescue Department is trying to recruit from different area codes. Take a look at this video. <laughs> Okay, so this is their take on rapper Ludacris' song Area Codes, which also features Nate Dogg. This was posted on Friday. It already has 5,000 shares and more than 300,000 views. 21-year-old Connor Boucher is the mastermind behind the lyrics and the concept for the video. It took him 12 hours from start to finish, but the response, he said, has made it all worth it.
So this is kind of a fun way to recruit members. A lot of people don't really think about joining their volunteer fire department. So our big thing was put this out, get response, bring some attention to the department and other departments as well that are sharing it and sort of bring in volunteers, bring in interest. Clearly uh, it's all work and no play over there. Is that like <laughs> 15 years? Is that song 15 it's, it's, years old now? He, he said, said that he didn't even know the original one, so that dated yeah. me. Well, even. <laughs> born. Well, He's a child. He's 11, so that probably has something to do oh, with it. Oh gosh. Listen, yeah. you know I love my firefighters, but... Um, that is a fact. <laughs> That <laughs> is a fact. I could, I, I mean, we weren't it was funny, it was funny. And I will give them this. Good on you for trying to recruit more people into the volunteer department. Hey, they um, already got several phone calls about people wanting to volunteer, so it's working. It's clearly working. I literally don't want to say anything right now. <laughs> I got nowhere. Good. Everything will get me fired. Nowhere. Everything on my that. mind will officially get me fired. Okay. All right, guys. It's pretty bad when I'm the one buttoned in the showdown, just so we're clear on that. <laughs> high temperatures today, everyone. 66 in Portland is the official high. 80 in Sanford, which is happening right now. Rockland Bar Harbor in the mid-50s. Didn't quite get there. Hey, it's been a while since we've seen temperatures like this. November 18th since we got to 60, October 19th through 70, and then it'll be a while before we get to 90. And we go many years without getting to 100, although I do remember that in 2011. I was here. It wasn't very pleasant. Current temperatures in the 50s uh, along the coastline, but look at Sanford still sitting at 80 degrees. No sea breeze there. All right, a front is going to approach as we head into tomorrow. Tomorrow's interesting. It's going to be mild, very mild, over the southern half of Maine. But the northern half is going to see this sneaky front just drape down, give them a few showers, and cool them down. So it's going to be a real split state forecast from south to north, and it'll be much warmer over southern Maine. Eventually, by Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning, we all get in on the showers. It's not a washout on Wednesday, but there's quite a few showers around. And then on Thursday, we clear out and cool down. But cool down is going to be a really relative term over the next seven days, which is going to be nice. All right, so here we are on Tuesday. Notice the clouds and the showers over in the northern half of the state. Meanwhile, still mild to the south. And then here come the showers statewide on Tuesday night and in through Wednesday. Again, not a washout, but quite a few of them around. Overall, even when we get into a cooler pattern on Thursday, that still has us in the 50s. Then we go back up to around 60 on Friday and Saturday. So it's going to be playing on the right side of the field here. Here's your seven-day forecast. Inland showing temperatures a little bit warmer. By the way, Easter Sunday at this point, looks like there'll be a few showers around. And it's kind of looked that way for the past couple of days. So chances are it will be at least an unsettled day uh, on Sunday. But before that, Friday looks nice, Saturday looks really nice as well. On the other side, a little cooler on Monday. But uh, Lee and Amanda, it is a huge change here that our temperatures, even on the cool side, are in the mid 50s. So going in the right direction. Yeah, happy change. He won't say it, but I believe this is it. I believe we're finally there, but he won't say it. I think we're good. <laughs> No more of the Ooh. yucky stuff. I don't know. We got good stuff coming at 530, and that means Sydney Williams is here. That's right. We've got one city that is trying to build two of the tallest buildings in Maine, and they say this is to alleviate some of the housing crisis in the Portland area. We're talking about out by the mall in South Portland. We're going to have all the details for you tonight. And she was the woman behind public television's Civil War drama Mercy Street, and now she's being honored for her work. We're going to meet her. It's all ahead at 6 at 530. Sorry, right. My show's confused Back here. To five. <laughs> she's at all. She's ready to skip it. Yeah. Back to 530. More news center now when we continue. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Before we get to brain drops, we did want to reference the uh, ribbons that we're wearing. Right. It's for uh, suicide awareness, and a lot of us here at New Center are wearing these. And so you've been asking what they are, and now you know. Very Just good. wanted to yeah. reference that. Yes. to address that earlier. All right, tonight's brain drops. Interesting. At one point, the United States military thought about seriously thought about bombing the moon. This is 1959. This is a recently declassified document, and the idea behind this whole plan was they could test some of the effects of their new nuclear weapons uh, in space. Also, there was a political motivation to this at the time. They wanted to show Russia that they were very nuclear capable. So they were planning on doing it on a part of the moon at a time of the day so that Russia could actually see the explosion <laughs> from where they were. This literally almost actually happened. Oh. And then it turns out a f uh, brighter heads and clearer minds prevailed. They nicknamed it A-119 
And I just have to wonder what A120 was. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> like an Austin Powers, like yes. sharks with laser yeah. beams on their forehead <laughs> or something. Or what's leading up to it, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Well, thank you, sir. Yep. Yeah. Appreciate that. Hey, some more news before we disappear here. Back up, Keith. Back oh, up. Oh, jeez. The Boston Marathon tight, one uh, week from today, and thousands of runners are <laughs> hoping to reach their lifelong goal of making it to the finish line. Yeah, but one woman from Maine will be taking part in the race after, even though she wasn't sure she'd be able to walk again. Yeah, Shelby Kaplan was run over by a car last summer, and both of her legs were under the front tires. Oh. Her injuries included an avulsion fracture in her left ankle, a grade two MCL sprain, and multiple abrasions, but she didn't break any bones or tear any ligaments. It has been a long road to recovery for Kaplan, but from crutching it to crushing it, <laughs> she's determined to cross that finish line. There are a lot of people that have it a lot worse than I do or have to overcome much more substantial injuries or setbacks. You look at the bombing victims. Uh, one gal that I found in Boston, Ann Tucci, who you know, was run over, she narrowly missed the bombings uh, about a mile from the finish line and then was run over by a van three weeks after the marathon and is running it this year as well. So it's you see other people and, and how positive they can be, and it just it makes you realize that, you know, life goes on. And Shelby says she plans to meet with Ann on Saturday for a smoothie and a run in Boston. She said when the, the car was on her legs, her first thought was, oh, no, I need to run Boston. Wow. Good you know, if that's her. the first thought, good yeah. for her. Go yeah. get them. Thanks for joining us.